You ever take a look at Roblox's front page and wonder, how the hell did we get here? Well, you're not alone. It's clear that bad games on Roblox are flourishing, while hidden gems are remaining buried beneath the spotlight. But why? If these hidden gems are so much better than these bad Roblox games, then they should be more popular, right? Well, sadly, no. This whole situation can be explained by three main factors. Audience, microtransactions, and this. So what are we waiting for? Let's break this down. At a most basic level, for a game to work, there's gotta be a player base to play it. And for the highest potential player count which these bad Roblox games are looking for, you generally want to appeal to the largest possible audience. These statistics suggest that the majority of Roblox audience is above 13. But let's be honest, with 13 plus account features and no real age verification, this ain't the case. And when we take the under 13 Roblox users hidden among the 13 plus demographic, there's a clear majority. So, you want to get the most players possible? Appeal to this sub-13 demographic, and it's not just the numbers that make this audience a prime target for boosting your game's numbers. See, if we're trying to get a consistently high player count, we're looking for the easiest consumers possible. That is, an audience that'll provide the highest amount of return for the least amount of effort. And kids under 13 fit this criteria. Catching the attention of this particular demographic is super straightforward. Exploit their curiosity with a shocking premise, something that'll get them to click, then provide a positive feedback loop with just enough variety and dopamine rewards to keep it interesting. As long as you follow some general rules of role Roblox game development, you've got a good chance at taking off and making it on the front page, even if there's no real game. I mean, just look at this, dude. These bad Roblox games absolutely understand what they're doing to grow, but oh goodness it doesn't stop there. It's no secret that Roblox loves promoting the highest earning games. In a consistent fashion, these bad Roblox games are filled to the brim with microtransactions. Normally, these would be harmless. Most people would look at these and immediately do. But you have to remember the target audience in question. The kids these games are specifically made for don't know any better and are thus more susceptible to these microtransactions. A prevalent example is the starter pack. Gain a boost of resources for a discount price only for this amount of time. That time limit is the issue. It pressures the player with that emergency feeling, that need to get it while it lasts, which works extraordinarily well when you've caught these children's attention with the dopamine reward loop. A good chunk of the time, these kids will cave and buy it, which provides the game revenue, which Roblox rewards by promoting the game even more, which brings even more kids to the game to cave and buy. It's a terrible loop, but it works extremely damn well for getting these games on the front page. This particular microtransaction is one of many, but the point still stands. By targeting children as the main audience and developing their dopamine rewards with clever microtransactions, these bad Roblox games are able to get consistently high player counts and stay in the favor of the algorithm. Now, our hidden gems, on the other hand, don't. They don't have these predatory microtransactions, they don't target children as their central audience for the sake of growing their player base. They're just passion projects being made for the sake of being made. Unfortunately, this means that they have a difficult time competing with their dopamine hit counterparts for a spot on the front page. When a kid is trying out different Roblox games, they're more likely to stick with the one that provides that immediate reward over the one that has a punishable learning curve. It's a damn shame that actual gameplay with learned mechanics that you can master can so easily lose players to games with that game guaranteed feedback loop. And considering that a majority of these hidden gems have minimal predatory microtransactions to feed the Roblox algorithm, it's no surprise that they lose their privileged, recommended status on Roblox's front page. That is, if they ever made it there in the first place. But of course, not all Roblox games with children as the dedicated audience are like this. There are a good chunk of genuinely great Roblox games out there that deserve the player base they've cultivated. That said, there are a lot, and I do mean a lot, of these bad Roblox games out there. Instead of being an experience to be enjoyed at one's leisure, they're just microtransaction-filled cash grabs looking to prey on that susceptible young audience. And the worst part? This strategy has historically worked for getting on the front page. It really does suck that these passion project hidden gems have such a difficult time competing with these dopamine factories. But, not all is lost. There's a Roblox game called Better Discovery that acts as a custom Roblox front page. It promotes games based on community reviews, and you can actually take a look at these reviews for yourself to see what made people like or dislike this particular game. It's pretty much the equivalent to Steam community reviews, and I highly recommend it as a tool for finding those hidden gems out there. And yeah, that's about it. See ya.